in this video, I'm going to give you the seven best ways to find commodity buyers. As a former commodity trader that worked mostly for small trading boutique, I can tell you that I've used all of those techniques and they work. But one warning though, I'm not claiming that all of those techniques are 100% legal. And if you use them in the future and you get caught, please don't say that you've got the idea from me. I mean, that's not cool, not cool. This video is all about finding leads, but if you want to know how to convert those leads into customers, then I would encourage you to check the commodity sales attestation. First link in the description below this video. That's it for the info. Let's dive in. Let's go. Technique number one, trade shows. Going to industry specific conferences, trade shows, trade fairs is a tried and true way to connect with new leads. Personally, this is how I found most of my customers. My company always had a booth at the Gulf Food Fair, which was really the place to be if you were active in the Middle East, Africa and India. So if you are on the fence because it costs a lot of money to exhibit at those events, let me tell you that it's worth it if you go to the right one. And also the parties on the side of the event are often the best. <laughs> Technique number two, trade association. Usually each country has their own trade association in relation with a specific commodity or a specific industry. So for example, a trade association would be a head committee in Deutschland. <laughs> no, not in Deutschland, in Holland. So this is the Royal Dutch Grain and Feed Trade Association. In Germany, you can find the Ovid. Der Verband der Ölüsten Verarbeitenden Industrie in Deutschland. The translation will be the Association of the Old Seed Processors in Germany. So you can easily contact them and ask for the list of their members. And if they don't want to give the list of their members, you can just wait a couple of weeks and then contact them again with another uh, telephone number. And you can just say that you are like a new startup and you would like to sponsor them. But for that, you would like to know who are their members. And seriously, it's really easy to find uh, any association. So for instance, let's say Steel Association in the UK, then Bam, tada! I mean, you see, it's really easy. Technique number three LinkedIn. So, yeah, on LinkedIn, it's extremely easy to find buyers. So, I don't know. I mean, for the people that don't know LinkedIn, maybe you should create an account and <laughs> just check for yourself because uh, I don't know, it's quite self explanatory. And by the way, don't uh, hesitate to follow me on LinkedIn. Um, as you can imagine, I write posts about commodities. Technique number four data trade aggregators. So to be honest, I've never really used this technique because uh, when I was actively looking for a new customer, um, I didn't know that uh, that was a thing or maybe that wasn't a thing back then. I, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> thing that at loud make me feel old. <laughs> anyway, so data trade aggregators are websites that basically collect all the information available about shipment in and out of certain countries. So this is insane when you think about it. There are 20 countries that make it mandatory by law that most of the information on any BL in and out of the country must be public. So basically those data trade aggregators gather those data and make them easily searchable. Technique number five, your clients. Shockingly, your clients <laughs> know their competitors. Okay, okay, you, you might be confused. So let's take a step back. There is basically two ways to, to, to get this information from your existing clients. So the honest way and the dishonest way. But if you want to be a trader, maybe you, I mean, for you, you don't even see that this is dishonest. So the honest way, you can just add them and say, look, uh, you know that I'm trying to get more clients um, in this region of the world. So maybe do you know a couple of them that I could speak with? And to be honest, uh, asking those questions usually get good results. So you should try. The dishonest way. The dishonest way is to be a bit more sneaky and ask questions like, oh, what are your three biggest competitors? Ah, and what type of volume do you think they do? Ah, okay, okay. 
And who is in charge? Do you know the guy? Is, is it cool? Is it nice? Ah, I don't know if it's really dishonest. Like, maybe, a, maybe a little. What do you think? It's fair game, no? So li leave a comment below. Uh, I'll be interested to know. Technique number six. Okay, okay. To be honest, there is no technique number six. <laughs> it's just that uh, I read somewhere that people click more on the number seven. So I said like, yeah. Why not have uh, seven techniques uh, in my uh, title? Uh, I know, I'm sorry about that. What the fuck am I doing with my life? Technique number seven. So this is where it gets uh, more or less murky or shady or uh, I don't know. So technique number seven, the shipping lines. So usually shipping lines have people at destination or origin or at least they have an agent and those people have all the information about what's going on. <laughs> so if you one way or another can contact them and ask nicely what is going on with rice, copper, steel, usually they talk. 